Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, I thought I would do a pretty fun end of the year video and rank all of the K-pop groups that debuted in 2021. There are a total of 22 groups on my list, which is honestly more than I was expecting, so in order to prevent the video stretching on for longer than it needs to, for most of these groups, I won't be going too far into my commentary around them. I'm not going to be taking sales or views into account, I'm just going to be going off my personal opinion alone, whether that's related to music, member composition, or music videos, we'll get more into the specifics as we get into the group specific segments, and as always, no hate intended to any of these groups that are ranked towards the bottom. Thank you so much for watching, and without further ado, let's get into number 22. <laughs> Despite having four releases this year, including their debut single album, two comeback single albums, and a digital single at the end of the year, sadly, I only like one song out of all of the ones they released, which is Exit. It seems like their company is very much so focused on quantity over quality, and I think it would have been better if they just made one good debut mini album and maybe a single album at the end of the year. <laughs> like the concept and sound that Posh Girls were going for. It's similar to that of GWSN, who are one of my favorite groups. However, it's very obvious that this company either doesn't have the funds or doesn't care to hire someone to make their song sound clean, because you can very obviously tell that the music is low budget, and the potential that the music has isn't enough to keep me interested or rank them any higher than they are. Major suffers from a similar case to that of Posh Girls, however I rank them one spot higher because it seems like there is a little bit of production value in certain parts of their music, and they're able to make certain parts of their music sound really good and they get stuck in your head really easily, and their music videos are pretty aesthetically pleasing too, even if they are just glorified dance practices. Specifically in their song Rain On Me, there are a lot of aquatic sounds in the music, and to match that, the music video is very based around blue colors and even has a set that looks like the ocean floor, which I thought was really cool. I was a big fan of Blitzer's initial debut mini album, however their first comeback really put them lower on the list for me. While their debut mini album had a really expensive looking music video and I only didn't save one or two songs to my playlist, for their first comeback, while the music video did stay very high budget, I didn't like a single one of the songs on the mini album. At least besides the title track, that one was good. To me, they sort of feel like a first draft version of a song where you would fine tune it and improve on it for the final release, but it just seems like they didn't do that. It seems like they kind of just took whatever they could get in terms of b-sides, and I think in the future they should be a little bit more picky about what they want to officially release. I don't necessarily have any problems with Epex's music, in my opinion though, it's just very lackluster. Songs like Do For Me and most of their b-sides seem to lack any form of drive or motivation behind them, and they don't really have any memorable songs unless they're really memorably bad. And the song that I'm talking about here is Lockdown. While it was very memorable to me, it wasn't at all in a good way, which is pretty disappointing because the song was honestly really good up until the chorus, which kind of ruined it. The members do seem to show a lot of talent, which gives them a few points in my book, however, I just think they need some better composers because the music they've been getting is not doing their talents justice. <laughs> Kingdom moves up a few places in my book simply for the fact that their music videos and storyline are so good. While I'm not necessarily sure how each one ties together, all of their music videos are extremely cinematic, and the best part is they're easy to follow. To me, the music isn't necessarily anything noteworthy. However, my main interest in Kingdom stems from how committed they are to their storyline, and I really like how expensive each music video looks and how they all tell a really compelling story. Pixie would be a lot higher on this list if their discography only consisted of their b-sides. Sadly though, for their title tracks, they seem to be going for this watered-down girl crush rock concept, similar to that of Dreamcatcher but not necessarily as well executed, and it sucks because most of their b-sides are so, so good, taking on musical concepts that haven't really been seen from girl groups, especially in the fourth generation, and doing them really well. If their discography consisted of only their b-sides, they would have one of the best discographies in 4th gen. Sadly though, 
that's not the case. What is kind of compelling about this group though is that they always interact with their fans on Twitter. One instance in particular comes to mind where a fan sent a picture of them doing half of a heart with their hand, and one of the members literally sent a picture back with them completing the heart, which I thought was super cute. So if you're looking to actually interact with some K-pop idols online, definitely check out their Twitter. <laughs> What frustrates me about Lightsum is that they come from a mid-tiered company that should be able to give them quality music. And even though they debuted in June, they already have less songs than groups that come from companies with much less money that debuted much later than them. And most of their music is very mid-tier. However though, their b-sides on their Vivace album were actually above average and I did enjoy them. However, it's the fact that there's such little music and their title tracks have both been very underwhelming to me that puts them this low on the list. <laughs> Despite having one of my absolute least favorite debuts of all time, Cypher were really able to redeem themselves with their first comeback. While not necessarily being anything groundbreaking, Blind is 100% a really solid, good track. Combined with them having overall good b-sides on their debut mini-album and their first comeback, the only two problems I have with Cypher is the song that they debuted with, and the fact that Rain, who owns the company that they're under, continues to insert himself into every single thing that Cypher does. Branding them as Rain's boy group, and even going as far as to go with them to variety shows, Rain needs to distance himself from the public image of Cypher so that they can build a fandom that is separate from his own. B has a pretty solid discography in my opinion, nothing to write home about, but it passes. My only problem is that their choreographies always look really awkward. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but they always use very unconventional steps in their choreographies, and while it does look unique, it doesn't necessarily look good. So yes, their music is fine, but the choreographies just throw me off. <laughs> definitely like Extenary Heroes, I, is that how you pronounce it? I'm just gonna go with that for now. However, they just debuted, they only have one song, and I'm very like in the middle about it, so I thought it would be fair to put them directly in the middle. I do really like the members, especially Juyeon, he's very much so caught my eye, but I can't really say much about them because they only have one song and I'm just on the fence about it. I like their concept definitely, but there's just not enough music to see if it's gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Similar to X Denary Heroes, Bugaboo only have two songs and they have a very unique concept. However, what puts them above X Denary Heroes for me is that the music that they released has been very good. It's not necessarily my favorite, but I do enjoy it, and I really hope they continue with this sort of musical theater kind of sound because it's really interesting and something that hasn't really been seen in K-pop. Initially, Luminous were much lower on this list, but upon re-listening to their most recent mini-album, I remembered how much I actually liked it and decided to put them at number 9. Specifically regarding their title track Run, it has a very laid-back and sleek sound while sounding very much so inspired by the 80s, and the inclusion of the 30-second instrumental dance break is really interesting and something that I don't see much in K-pop. Just an overall very underrated group with some pretty good songs that I highly recommend checking out. Gotcha. Somebody who ults Wikimiki, Aichilin's music definitely reminds me of theirs. Specifically, their single Gotcha got stuck in my head so easily, and if it wasn't for the verses being uh, sort of below average, it definitely would have been one of my top 20 title tracks of the year. Something about the Teen Crush concept is just super appealing, and despite coming from what seems to be a relatively unknown company, their music is very high quality. What I also like about their music videos is that while they do seem a little bit low budget, the camera quality is good, and they sort of embrace this low quality factor about them. They include clips in the music video which sort of seem like scripted behind the scenes moments, and they're overall just really cute and super engaging. <laughs> The futuristic sound is something that I've only really seen ONF do in the past, and I'm really glad Mirei are following in their footsteps. Having so many songs that make you just want to get up and dance, where Mirei really excels is how every single thing about them seems very high energy, and it's sort of infectious. Their debut mini-album 
album, Hot Issue were taking on a similar sound to that of Itzy, which I was very indifferent about. However, with their first comeback, and this is basically the only reason they're up this high, they released one of my all-time favorite songs of the year, Hot Candy, which is just a b-side. Everything from the crisp and powerful vocals to the really interesting instrumental made this song so charming and addicting to me, and it easily feels like something that could be released by, like, Espa, and if Espa did release this, it would be one of, if not their absolute best song. So, yeah, it's just really good. <laughs> All of the groups that debuted this year, I think Tri-B has the second most unique music. Number one, we'll talk about soon. Every single one of their title tracks was an absolute hit, and they actually just released a song in collaboration with the TV show on Cartoon Network, We Baby Bears, I think it's called, and it's genuinely really, really amazing. No matter what, when I listen to a Tri-B song, it's gonna get stuck in my head, and I will not have any complaints. Every single track in their discography has this really addicting hook to it, and I can find myself looping their music for hours on it. Vamos a la fiesta. <laughs> definitely just classify Omega X as another noisy boys group because that's basically what they are, but in my opinion, their noise music is really top tier. One thing I do think they're lacking is that their title track choice is always a little bit off. Genuinely, the title track is the worst song on both of their releases this year, but the good thing is they're not bad by any means. Their music doesn't really try anything that we haven't seen before, but what's good about them is that they take what we've seen and they amplify it, making a noise music that, if you're really into the genre like me lies a little bit above the rest on the total. Billy is the group that I was talking about earlier that has the most unique music out of all of the 2021 rookies. Being the definition of experimental, Billy's discography experiments with song structures and samples that we've never seen before. For example, in their song Ring X Ring, you don't realize that the chorus is about to drop until it hits you in the face. And then they show off their powerful vocals with this chorus that has so much momentum that even though you don't really know what's going on, you can't help but get into it. They've only debuted a little bit ago, but they've already had their first come back which was so good, and if it wasn't for the sort of boring ballads that they have on their first mini album, they would be in the top two or maybe even first place because Flipping a Coin, which was a b-side on their first mini, is maybe my favorite song of the year. I take pride in the fact that I liked Ives' debut song the first time I heard it, having some of the most interesting melodies that I've ever heard, especially in that pre-chorus. Ive have done their older sister groups WJSN and Sistar proud by having a really good discography right from the get-go. I also love how whoever made Eleven didn't feel like they needed to shoehorn a rap section in, because I didn't even realize that there wasn't a rap until people started talking about it because the song just made so much sense. They knew that they could create a fully fleshed out song without putting a rap section in and I do commend them for that. Also, their music videos are just... I, I don't even need to explain, they're just so good and I cannot wait to see what they put out next. Out of every single group that I mentioned today, Purple Kiss, in my opinion, has the most consistently good discography. My unpopular opinion is that I actually really loved Ponzonia and my popular opinion is that, just like everyone else, Zombie is one of my favorite songs of the year, and their b-sides are nothing to laugh at either. I genuinely have every single one saved to my playlist, in my opinion they do not have a single skip yet, and they also have some of the most talented members that I've ever seen. Almost, if not all of the members have credits in the creative process of the music making, and they also have some of the best vocalists in Swan and Goan. I also don't know how she compares to other idol rappers, but Yuki is one of my favorite 4th gen rappers, and when it comes to music, I feel like I can trust Purple Kiss because they have so much control over what they do. And that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to let me know what you thought of my choices and how you would rank the 2021 rookies. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, sharing, or subscribing, and without further ado, I'll see you next time.